everyone and welcome back to Hemeldale Model Railway. So in today's video I'm going to give you a little bit of an update on some of the work that I've been doing over the last few days and also I'm going to show you some of the plans and ideas that I've got for the town scene and also I'm going to talk about some plans that I've got for the opposite end of the layout. Right so let's crack on with the video. So what I have been doing on this section here is I've weathered the track and also I've added in some extra sleepers where I've put my dropper wires in and also now I have filled over the uh, polystyrene that was on that section there and I'm just currently waiting for that to dry so then I can add static grass to the top and then what I'll be doing is painting it up on a rock face closest to the track, the same as that I've done on this side here. So what I've now done is to add in my third DCC line. I currently have only got to uh, the start of the curves up in that corner. Um, but I've done all of my dropper wires for it and it now stretches all the way through up to the tunnel and then it comes out now over on this side here. So I've still got to um, stick down or pin down uh, this piece of track here. Uh, but what I'm currently now working on is the back end of the layout on this section here. So where the polystyrene is and those blocks of wood, I've just temporarily mocked up what um, and how much space I need for this section. So I'm going to add in a set of points uh, down at the bottom there. And then that will travel or take a line through... Uh, the back of the back, uh, the back section and then it will go underneath that board and then it will come out on that section there and then it will link up to what will be a big station scene on this side here. So I've temporarily put in um, some, a tunnel portal on that side and then I'll have a three lane tunnel there and then a single lane a single tunnel lane up at the end there my two tracks that will go on the top I've been having uh, quite a big discussion with Alan from Buckland Junction uh, so I've actually refilmed parts of this because originally I was just going to have um, Sort of two loops uh, that go round uh, the whole entire layout um, but then I was or well, we were chatting and if I wanted to swap out any locos and stuff I'm gonna have to actually remove them off the tracks and stuff so I'm gonna have a little thought on how I can uh, work out if maybe when it comes down to this section it starts to go down onto a lower level so there'll be a small uh, incline that will go down and then when it reaches back over onto this section it then goes uh, starts to go back up an incline and then joins back on to the viaduct at the top there so I've got so much to think about on how I'm going to actually do that so I think it's going to be a case of having to replan or actually start drawing out some plans for when I get onto this section here. So I've had a major tidy up of my workbench because once I get the back section um, marked out I've then got to start thinking about how uh, the tracks will interchange on this section here. So I thought I would give it a big clear down and then I'm going to use some uh, templates of tracks and points to start planning out properly 
uh, how I'm going to use this section here uh, because this section will be quite intricate with points and stuff um, it's important that I get it right I was thinking for this section here so this back half will be a more modern image depot and then moving on to this side uh, will be the housing for steam locos so I'll have some uh, steam loco engine sheds up on this section here and then I'm going to stick with the main uh, station in here and probably have about a seven foot station that will stretch up into this part here. Thinking about uh, the tracks for the top of this section here. So what I have done is to add in uh, two lengths of flexi up onto the top of the viaduct and then I've now started working on uh, my curves for this section here and how they will look and how much room I'll need on the board and then in the corner here I'm looking at having a little bit of an embankment with maybe some houses or shops or something in the distance then with this section here so I need to make uh, where this um, edge of the path here I need to make um, another part of that uh, bridge that will come over on that side and then through here will be either uh, a path or something leading to some houses and shops that will, I will fill up in this section here and then I will fence off uh, the railway tracks that come through up on this section so when it comes down to uh, this part here um, it'll be about a foot wide and I'm thinking maybe that I can put a set of points up in this section here so then they can lead off then uh, going into the distance uh, going up that way into possibly a fiddle yard and then I'll have the main run down here like I say, I'm a little bit undecided on if I'll have an incline or not yet, um, but I definitely think that that's probably a good idea uh, that I could bring uh, locos from uh, this section here up onto the top line and vice versa. I can bring anything from the top line down to the bottom lines. I've then got to work out how I bring uh, these uh, four lines down into here um, it's going to be quite tricky uh, without having some sort of sharp bends because I've only got an eight foot space to play with on here so definitely uh, putting down some track plans and stuff will be a great idea I'm possibly thinking of just having uh, sets of points and crossovers that will come off these lines and then bring them down into this section here and then I can reverse any uh, modern image uh, locos back up into these sections here so yeah so much to plan and uh, going to be quite complex as for progress with the station um, I'm still yet to light up uh, those two lights there and because I've been planning out uh, spacing and stuff, and because that board is removable, what I'll do is probably uh, stick down a lot of the contours and stuff uh, while the board is detachable. And I can just kind of work on all the details uh, over on the other side. And then when it's time to actually fix it into place, um, it'll be a complete board. For the platform surface, what I'm going to be doing is using some acrylic paints and sand just to give it a little bit of texture and weathering and I'll be doing that in the next few weeks and what I was also thinking of doing was adding a little bit of filler down uh, the center of the tracks just to give a little bit of texture and variation to the height of the tracks there 
So there's not been a massive amount of progress on the layout. Um, it's all about planning and just taking my time with it. And like I said previously, after having a bit of a conversation, um, it's thrown a lot more ideas into the mix. So I think it's time that I will sit down and maybe draw some plans of what I actually want to achieve and how uh, the playability factor uh, will come into uh, being able to switch locos onto different tracks. So that's definitely something that I'm going to be thinking about uh, very soon. I'm hoping that um, in February I should be able to have all of this top section done on the back here and then my March project and once it's warmed up a bit in here will be then to start getting all of the uh, work done on these boards here. So thank you for joining me on this update. The end of the video is just going to be a little bit of a running session of the locos that I have running at the moment and I'll also show you some of the operation of the uh, fourth running line that I've got currently going as well. So thanks for joining everyone and I will speak to you all soon. Bye for now.